and welcome back everyone to a Wednesday dose of Trek Yards Mission Briefing, your weekly Starship review, discussion, theorization, first look, briefing, except mission briefing, of a ship from the multiple official, non official canon video game Star Trek universe. We want to cover it all, discuss, theorize, and I think it's fair to say, Stuart, we look at them, look at these ships in detail we've never ever looked at before, and I think we have interesting thoughts, and that's why you guys tune in every week. So, welcome back, Stuart. Thank you. I agree with all you say, all the time, sir. Uh, well, there you go. But today, Stuart, I hear we're doing the Belk nap. Belk You're nap. wrong. You're wrong. Belk You're nap. Wrong. It's Belk just the nap. bell nap. The K oh. is silent for some reason. I made that mistake for many, 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 many years saying the K, but I got corrected a few times. So it's bell nap. And this episode of Mission Briefing is sponsored by our good friend Dan Hall, who is an incredible guy. I met him a few times at Ticonderoga. And one of the best guys you'd ever want to meet. So well, wow, that's high praise, you, especially from you. He's also Absolutely. a pretty damn good guy. So, but Stuart, give us the uh, what is this ship then? Because I, I, it looks very familiar and yet different. Well, this is the Mark Twenty B, to be specific. Um, cla it's a strike cruiser. It's an, and it's the Belknap class. Uh, huh. So this is more of a. It's a smaller ship than the Enterprise. Uh, it's about the same size as the Constitution class saucer and stuff, but the secondary hull is a lot more compact. Hmm. And uh, got the lower lower supported pylons, so it's made for agility and maneuverability, and it's made to tangle with actually D sevens and Katingas along the border, because it's more maneuverable than the Constitution class. Mm. So, so it's more about using the firepower of the Constitution class frame in a more tactical way, sort of thing. Pretty much, yes, yeah. yes. And there's actually a few different variations of this as well, but we'll get into those a little bit later. Okay, cool. Well, I guess so first react. Well, well oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, what do you think? What's your first reaction? <laughs> I mean, I, this is a design I feel like has been around for a good 15, 20 years minimum. It um, it's it, I mean, certainly a classic kit bash, uh, and very simple. Although I didn't realize there was a secondary hull difference, and obviously you can see the deflect dish difference. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny. The first thing that I see is instinctively I think, oh, that that must be weaker for the pylons. But what an what an eight brain basic way of thinking about it. I mean, that's such a non. Mm -hmm. You know, although it would have been nice, I guess, to maybe have like a small line to flatten out the nacelles rather than be direct up to have that little, you know, right angle just as a little bit of reinforcement, um, just to mm -hmm. whatnot. But yeah, it's nice. It, uh, it, it's it's sort of kit bashy, and I think other views will, will shed more light into how different it is. Mm -hmm. But aesthetically, um, I quite like the the lower nacelles, but upper pylons. I think it's it's got a certain elegance to it, actually. Yeah, I I totally agree with all that. Uh, even I do love the underslung or the the lower strut placements yes. um, and I have included that actually in my Foley class as well because I thought this was mm. such a great design element uh, there's a reason for it as well oh. which we will again talk about in a little bit but let's go to the next picture uh, this is just a beautiful shot of it with a Reliant in the background or a Miranda class sorry yeah uh, and I think it's a fantastic ship I love the little squat profile of it the the, oh. the view from the side is incredible again I think you can see you can see where it has more maneuverability than the Constitution class. It's a little more rugged, a little more like, sturdy and kind of scrappy, I think. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say one of the uh, different classes uh, based on this design is the Athabasca class, uh, which is a Mark Twenty Two B. It's basically the exact same, except the saucer is a Reliant or a Miranda class sure. saucer. Um, and it's got actual, f um, here's a quick picture of it because I didn't include one. But it's got the f mega phasers on the top. Uh. But you can see it's got like the m Reliant class. Yeah. So I guess the so, heavy, heavy destroyer version. Yeah, with this, that would be a little bit more powerful. So uh, I didn't include a picture of it, unfortunately, but uh, I thought with the Miranda here, it'd be worth mentioning it at least. So. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I do think, you know, the, the plug and play nature works, but at the same token, I would have tailor made. You know, if the special ship is very purpose needed, you know, is is for a set thing, you would think they'd at least tweak the parts for a subclass. If you're you know, if you're rebuilding the ship and plug and playing it, you've got at least a couple of days or weeks in space dock. Why wouldn't you modify things a bit more to well, make them a bit they, more? Well, they do. The only thing that's really the same is the saucer. I mean, the neck is much different. It actually extends out a little bit farther. It's a thicker neck, hmm. and then the whole secondary hull is different. Because <coughs> we haven't really gotten enough views to show that, so no, <laughs> you'll see that soon. So there we go. 
Uh, the next shot, again, is from the mm. back. There you can see a little bit of the, thic mm. the thickening of the, s the neck, the extending it mm. backwards a little bit. <clears throat> I always love seeing a shuttle bay because it sh gives you a real sense of internal space and just a 3D within a 3D. Yeah, or lack thereof. You know, I always thought there was more... When I was younger, I always thought there was more room in the secondary hull. I never mm. really considered how deep the shuttle bays went, but, yeah, it kind of puts everything into perspective it, for It's you, just a it? couple of warehouses, really. Yeah. It, it's not yeah. ginormous. Although I will... I will say that I'm I'm really surprised, and obviously this is a fan 3D model. I mean, they're all, they're all fan in essence, and this is canon. But I would have mm -hmm. I'm very surprised the impulse engines aren't souped up and and you know, either Excelsior style or just bigger. I'm really kind of surprised if it's meant to be more maneuverable and more you know that they either would have really surprised about that. But hopefully other versions would have that. I mean, obviously this is just mm -hmm. a version of it. Um, I think I have seen some uh, different variations of it that do have a more souped up impulse deck, yeah. which makes sense absolutely. Um, so, hmm. Hmm. okay. The, ne the next picture is from the side, so we get to see the difference in the secondary right. hull uh, and the neck. Is there is very prominent. Oh. So, sorts the rationale behind the because that's that's a that's like a what a forty percent increase in neck, uh, something like that. Yeah. And what's the rationale behind that? Because that well, because it takes away its whole separation ability. <laughs> first of all, uh, well, theoretically. Mm. Um, well, yeah, you can see the the you know the, the you know the, that blue pop point is the thing that pops out, so you can't do that anymore. But what what do you think the rationale is behind the uh, extra neck? I would think um, it would help the maneuverability of the ship, uh, the structural integrity, because it's thicker. Um, like, well, it's, it's bigger. It's more robust. So when it's doing more agile maneuvering, it could be mm. that it doesn't the structural stresses won't, wouldn't be so much because um, mm. the the neck is bulked out a bit. That would be my guess. Mm. Uh, like I said, to make it sturdier and more scrappy, just mm. you know, thicken it up a bit. Well, obviously, it fixes one of the the few issues of the of the colony and other such ships, you know, the, the the short neck. But yeah, I mean, if they're looking at you know, we want to increase the turn radius and well, not so much increase, but push the set push the same engines to produce that on normal constitution class. Okay, you've got a forty percent chance of you know damaging a system. In this, you might only have a five percent chance. So they're pushing those mm. margins, and obviously, in a battle. If you can get the torpedoes to bear quicker, say ten seconds quicker, and get that torpedo off ten seconds quicker, and get that hit on a Katinga or such, that's going to make a difference. So even a five percent, ten percent, twenty percent increase in movability will make a difference, especially since Klingon ships are more maneuverable. I mean, obviously you look at the the, the you know the fan film, the first one that you know the Doug director did with the CGI of the ships doing all barrel roll rolls. I mean, then then it's like they're maneuverable as hell. But I think I think I would have said the D sevens are more maneuverable. I mean, they are smaller. But I was at the sense they kind of were compared to these. Yeah, well, we even say so in our data files or uh, our data yep. file episode on the because they got some of them have four impulse engines as opposed to two, so they make them yep. a little bit more maneuverable. Uh, and just hmm. yeah, again, the nature of that ship design with the engines kind of not as high up, you know, they're kind of closer yeah. to the hull, uh, very similar to this. So yeah, the D seven is quite a maneuverable ship. So do you think this also has a faster warp speed or at least maintain because the warp bubble will be. I mean, the warp yes. bubble is, is more streamlined. Uh, yes, it's actual. It's emergency warp speed is warp twelve, old scale. Um, uh, <laughs> maximum warp is warp ten point three, and I think cruising speed on this is eight point one. So yeah, it's more. It's faster than the Constitution class, because the Constitution class I think its cruising speed is six something, six point eight, something yeah. like that, and its max speed is eight point six, and it's got an emergency speed of whatever. I don't even know. Hmm. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I like it. I, I do. It really streamlines, which is odd because it bulks out the neck so much. But it really sort of, I wish, I wish that had more of a curve. Like if that had curved, if that back portion had like, uh, I'm trying to think of a ship that would be equivalent. Let me. I guess I kind of voyaged. If it voyaged into the secondary hull, so it's one big piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, it would have. I mean, obviously the shapes. It it fit, follows the shape forms with say the front of the engine. I mean, they're, they're very harsh lines is what the, the refits have. I mean, that, that fits that aesthetic. But it would have been nice if it progressed into that a bit more then it'd be... And else if you if you bulked up the struts a bit more, then suddenly you've got this really robust iteration of the of the Constitution mm -hmm. class pieces, but it could take apart a lot more punishment and a lot more uh, G-forces. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, w one thing I really like here is the, is the secondary hull. Uh, the way that it it's more angled. It's not as abrupt as the Constitution class. It's not yes. as big and bulky. I really like that look. 
Um, it'd be cool if they could extend it down a little bit more and have it the whole thing yep. kind of lead up to the back. I don't really like that going down and coming back up thing. It works in this case, but I think it would look a little bit cooler going down further, personally. Yeah, I, I hadn't... I was trying to put my finger on what was different. I knew the second hole was different in the front, but I couldn't put my finger on it, but you're right, it's been pulled in a bit. Yeah, it works. It, it It's all about those subtle lines. You know, it's different, but yeah. it's the same. So here we have the full orthos. Uh, now this is done by Barry Chapman, who does a lot of our work for us, as you know. He actually... My friend Michael Quigley owns the... Well, it doesn't own it, but he has the <laughs> Facebook page, uh, the Belknap um, Starship page, and he wanted a 3D model of the Belknap for that. So I put him and Barry in touch with each other, and Barry created this awesome model of it. Uh, so great job to Barry, great, and thank you to Michael for suggesting it, and and me putting for everybody in touch and being the matchmaker. That's what I do. <laughs> it's good. It's good work. Anyway, <laughs> so what do you think of the the ship with all these angles? Well, the front's obviously different. Um, yeah. I don't know. Are they trying to say it's more advanced? I mean, we, we, we have often said, you know, different deflectors, different purposes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I could tell the barrier style straight away because the, 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 he does authors in a certain certain way. I tend to use Tobias' author style, but he this, he's his own style. Yeah, um, again, it, it sort of feels flimsy at the bottom um, and a, a little bit. I don't think so, I don't think so personally, but but I mean just like a smidge, just like a little bit too like it should be more integrated. It feels tacked on um, a little bit, it, but there's a reason for that, which we'll, well get to yes. soon. As as we yes. say often, if there's a reason, then it makes sense. Although I will say, that if you look at the bottom view, it the way it's attached to the hull kind of looks like the Eagle Moss model um, in the sense that you it sort of attaches to the hull, and you can see the slight lines of where just the, the pylons go in. It, the bottom of it, which look, could be the top. Just how it's all flipped. It's all, uh... yeah. Well, like I said, we'll talk about mm. that in a minute. <laughs> the side, I mean, the side view, the side view is great. The side view, again, awesome. it's so. I mean, the top view is identical, for the most part. Again, I really wish they really needed to have altered the, the saucer a bit. Take you know, I mean, you would assume yeah. that the impulse module is a module. Yeah. You know, take yeah, that I out, think... plug and play a new one. That one additional change to the saucer would, I think, make it a more real-feeling design. Um, that one thing would have made it um, better, I think. Totally agree with you. I think redoing the whole impulse deck would be much better. Even to put two impulse crystals and have, like, a more, yeah. like, a sturdy... Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be incredibly Like, like two cool. smaller ones that sort of have a pulsing yeah. bit in between, just, like, you know, feeding power for each other sort of thing. Yeah. Sure. And then I think it probably could have done with another torpedo launcher as well. Again, cl t taking the same stars of the refit again seems folly. It's the mm -hmm. kit bash approach rather than the let's design a ship approach. You know, having a third torpedo tube on top of the two, having three, is a natural, you know, inclination that's more of a warship. Mm -hmm. And functionally, it would also make sense with a bigger neck. You know, you've got more space to, yeah. to dedicate. It, yeah, it is a it is a strike cruiser. So I would even think including a rear facing uh, torpedo so, launcher at the back of the neck would be yeah. totally possible if you just did some tweaking and redesigning. Yeah. So, so I good. totally agree with that. Uh, it actually has less phasers than the Constitution class. Uh, it's got a small phaser bank on the bottom there of the secondary yes. hull. The f the re refit Constitution class has four, four. at the bottom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this one is a little bit, in my opinion, under under ar armored. Underarmed, so yeah. not armored, um, especially for a straight cruiser roll. Well, well, maybe there the torpedoes mark six launchers that can fire them twice as fast. Same launcher, double power. Ding. Wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. Would. Yeah. Uh, next picture. Speaking of which, ah. it's just a shot of it. Uh, this is Barry's model again, I think. Uh, launching photon torpedoes, which looks very cool. It looks like it launches them pretty quick. So. Yeah. Absolutely. I do like though the. And the, the the bottom of the secondary hull has more of an Excelsior vibe, I think, because of how everything combines. Something yeah. about it has more of it, which I kind of like. It, it's more, I don't know. I like now. I, like now I it, dislike it now, thanks, because because oh. of that. Because I hate the Excelsior. Oh, that's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, go. Um, next shot again. It's firing torpedoes again, but this time from mm. the front. And here we can see the. Huh. How the, the the struts actually are one solid piece across the bottom, and they attach. And uh, in a minute, we're going to see a diagram of just the struts and kind of explain the functionality of that. 
Um, hmm. That's odd. It is odd. It is. Mm. Again, I think it could be, like you said earlier, it could be integrated a little bit better. Uh, I really don't have much of a problem with it, um, but I can see doing some redesigns down there as well would be cool. I'm trying to, mm, I'm trying to work out if I like that deflector or not. I don't uh, know. I can't make up my mind. The way it's, for some reason, it's losing the punch of the refit somehow. I think it's, it 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 um, dilutes the shapes a bit by having an extra layer to it, and I don't know it, it you know being slightly sm looks slightly smaller in context. I don't know just all it's tricky, but you know yeah yeah I, I kind of mm. see what you're saying. Mm. I don't have a problem with the deflector per se, but uh, yeah. So the next shot gives us a size comparison uh -huh. with the Constitution class, and here you really see the differences huh. in the secondary hull and the neck. Um, hmm. <clears throat> mm. So again, I I like this thing from the side. This a lot yeah. of these ships from one view I I look I think looks <laughs> fantastic. Like the the uh, Ryan Church JJ prize. I love it from the side. It looks like a you know, hot rod. Every other view just falls apart for me. And the this the Belknap is kind of the same way. Some views it's like, "Uh, change things." But the side <laughs> I, re I really love. I really love that. It's interesting, obviously. I'm I'm noting a few I mean, the deflector is smaller, that is, uh -huh. which is, is odd, but that's fine. More it focused, is, I don't mean be, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it, it's more integrated, That you can see it's taken the chunk off. I like that they've now elongated the pylons to take up that entire mm -hmm. pit that bit that sticks out. I don't know what functionally it all does, um, but I, I really like that. It makes it feel a bit chunkier, but in a integrated way, mm -hmm. you know? Like, the, the pieces all combine well. Yeah. Um... And it also feels like the secondary hull is less deep as well. They've cut, they've, they've slimmed in every respect. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which would take away from engineering rooms, engineering spaces, shuttle bays, well, deflector well, control. It to, be fair, takes, the, to be fair, they're probably just taking away other subs, like other secondary things, like take away the arboretum, take away that away. You've not actually lost anything for the ship. You've just lost something for the good, crew. Good point. And the put in the pool. The well, pool down there. Somewhere. I mean, probably bowling stuff. alley. That's just on the TOS one, I think. I don't know. <laughs> mm. uh, the next shot, real quick, is just there. You, there's different uh. versions of a TOS version of it, which again works. I like it. I'm not a huge fan uh. of the secondary hull on this one at all, but uh. I do like the TOS aesthetic. So I just uh. thought I'd include this real quick. There's the some much better pictures of it, but I just this is the one I grabbed. Yeah, the pylons are ultra clunky in this version. They don't work for this aesthetic particularly well. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's yeah. tricky. I think they should have step, step kept with the thinner pylons. The continuing in one angle. I think it would have worked better because that top view is pretty... Well, it looks like a Connie, but they've misproportioned something. Like, it doesn't have <laughs> the elegance. They've yeah. ruined a Connie from the top. The front, it looks like a an old camera. Like the same way holds one of those cameras they used to hold... Um, the front's ugly. So is the side. I mean, this one, <laughs> as much as I love the TOS aesthetic, and I do think this is cool to fit in with that fleet, the neck, again, is not much different than the Constitution class. It, it gets, like, longer at the bottom, Yep. Uh, obviously. But I think the refinement that went into the refit version of this was much is much nicer, especially from this side. Yes. So uh, I think what you'd need to do with this little ship is take the... Rather than kit bash it take the idea of the ship and then redesign um, pieces so none of it is exactly the same as the Constitution class. It's all designed to fit the purpose that it's meant to be on. Because this is very sort of just someone's put it together rather than it feels its role. You know, mm -hmm. why build this? Why not just build a Connie? So, I don't know. I think I think you and I need to redesign this ship because... There's a couple the, we've said that for. <laughs> yeah, improve the impulse deck, add more torpedo launchers, yep. Yep. change the bottom of the secondary hull. I think we yeah. should make it something really fantastic. Do you guys want to see that? If so, comment below. And you do. <laughs> we know you do. All right, so the next picture is where we get to this: the engine pylons. Now, these are classed as routine detachable, which means they are regularly uh, designed to be detached and reattached. Uh, I don't know if that's for specifically for upgrading the engines or what the purpose is. I know... Explosive bolts can launch them off if there's going to be yep. a failure. We've talked about that in our saucer separation that there was also pylon ejection ports for the the Constitution class as well. But yeah. 
<clears throat> this one here says routine detachable, which means that it's something that would happen on a regular basis or could be easily done. And I think it's much more, much simpler than the Constitution class, is I think what they're getting at. Whether you believe that or not, I don't know, but I'm just telling you what I see in my book. <laughs> I think the idea of explosive bolts is fine and dandy, but the you know the the Enterprise D, its saucer is kept on by magnetic locks that can disengage, and move. So why on earth wouldn't the Constitution class have magnetic bolts that you demagnetize and then the ship just thrusts down slightly and mm. they come out? You don't need explosive bolts. That's the emergency system. You know, I know, yeah, I know the well, yeah. saucer has explosive bolts, but well, that's no. that's what that's what I was saying. The explosive bolts are the emergency system for releasing yeah. these. But I think because they're routine detachable, there's other. It says adhesion plates, which makes me think that it's magnetic. It just <clears> seems <throat> more complicated because it creates a new point of damage. If you if you hit that part of the ship, you can detach both nacelles at the same token. If you hit a normal True. ship, there's only one point of each nacelle. You've actually made a weak spot. Um, and if stuff's, you know, it, it, I mean, I can't imagine. Okay, so both, both of the power feeds are going through that into the bottom plate into the ship. So if you disable the bottom plate again, both engines go offline. A single mm -hmm. engine is going directly into the ship. There's no mid step. So I think this is a, this is a, 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 a this is a this is a step behind. You know, the economy is a, a more redundant mm. system. I somewhat agree. However, one. Perfectly placed photon torpedo right between the two pylons of a constitution class will do the exact same thing as far as damage goes to both struts. I'm sorry, but when shields are down, every ship has these weaknesses. So yes, but know. I just think it creates an extra one that that wasn't there before. It's true, true. Mm. Anyway, that's the mm. reason for them. They're more routine you, detachable. Just I mean, so you it would make sense if this was how they attached the main Connie. Like you can just sort of slide it up and go on top of a, a a Connie and then just attaches and you've got either side then it can be a belt nap or a you know mm -hmm. refit it to be a, a Connie esque. Or even flip it upside down and have it, you know, be more of a mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, like my uh yeah. my South Bend Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Cool. Mm. Alright, uh next one is just like a movie era <laughs> L cars, which I had to include because I love it. I love the green on the black. It looks fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it's sexy green, isn't it? And here the impulse deck has been modified somewhat uh, from the top. It's much. It's a little bit different than the uh, yeah. Constitution yeah. class. It's also, got a, it's also got a round deflector as opposed to the oval one. Works better. Works better. So this could be the decanter class, which is uh, another version of the belt nap. Cool. Um, but I, don't quote me on that. But I think it <laughs> might be the decanter, decanter class. So. Okay. Cool. And uh, next up is just another shot for the, the pylons from the f top. You get to see them nice and wide there, which I like, the sturdiness of that. Works better on this one than the Connie style. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And this has the deca decatur there. Not decanter, sorry. Decatur. <laughs> um, so. 2501. So in the logic of the, the non, most of the time, sort of possibly working, it's, oh, it's newer than the Excelsior. Well, this apparently came into service after Star Trek II, uh, from what mm. I've, I remember reading. So between Star Trek II and Star Trek VI is when they were being pumped out. So <laughs> that's, that's quite a long time. It's like, oh, being pumped out, yeah. Well, it would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because the, the, anything that takes the familiar pieces, I mean, obviously these pieces have been crafted to perfection. That's why the refit is arguably the best ship, mm -hmm. just because of how it's the... The classical shape, but with the movie detail, and it it, it ages really, really well because it's got a certain simple yet detailed beautifulness, you know. Mm. So taking those pieces, you're, you're going to have a winner most of the time because it, it's still got beautiful things. But it is it is a kit bash. It's just you know, so, um, but it's a kit bash that that's a legendary part of the Trek universe is to do that. So it works. And it's like, it's difficult to sort of go against it really because it works. Yeah, one thing I like to point out here that I just noticed is that on the rear of the um, neck attachment there's a phaser bank which on the refit enterprise oh. there's two single uh, ball ball uh, phasers above the shuttle bay so there's two rear facing ones yeah this one doesn't seem to have those above the shuttle bay but it's moved them to the top of the neck there which 
would probably give them wider range of motion. Well, to be fair, it's not labeling every phaser, so I would still assume there'd be the one above the. Uh, well, you can't really. Bay there's not the details not there for it though. Because on the Constitution yeah, class, so you, can actually, you can actually see. It's true. Hmm. Yeah, because on the Constitution class, on each side of that navigation light, there's a ball turret. So for rear, rear firing. I wonder why. Change the change. Hmm. Nah, well, look how low your engines are. You don't want to have a phaser back there at the <laughs> same level that's firing. Uh, yeah. The Constitution class doesn't have that problem. I mean, yeah, you're right. Your firing arc is basically just up. And, and straight back. back, yeah, yeah, which is arguably the most efficient. You know that that's what you want. But then put a peer launcher back there. Yeah, yeah. Well, huh. on the, and on the Constitution, you got you can actually go to the sides because yeah. you don't have the, your engines right there. So that makes sense actually that they huh. moved them. Huh. But still, less phasers than a Constitution class. So, but maybe they're using the, you know, maybe they've got to charge the emitter so the excess power can go into everything else. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Structural integrity field for better maneuvering. Absolutely. Missed that. Yeah. And the last picture is huh. just an awesome shot of it in orbit with a space station behind it. And I think it's fantastic. So, closing thoughts. I really like the Belknap class. Um, I didn't realize that there were some things that really should have been tweaked to what <laughs> did this. But now that I've seen them, I, yeah, they need to make some modifications to really make it the ideal strike cruiser because now it's just okay <laughs> <laughs> did you say it was like version 22b as well it had a lot of, iter a lot of iterations of this you think they get it right by well then? no not of this specifically <laughs> because like the the yeah the, the the avenger class is mark 11b you know stuff like that well it's worth asking you've got a book there so when did this come into play is this a faster ship is this a is this, is the is this a franz joseph this is the uh, Starship um, uh, Starfleet Dynamics book, and this was 1996, I believe. Huh. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this design was actually fast, so that's a good question, but the ship's been around for quite a long time. Mm. And here, basically, the Ascension class Dreadnought is basically right. a Belknap with an extra engine to make it a Dreadnought. Yeah. So... And that's Mark 21B. So they all have their own class designations in here, which are different than what we're used to. But Yeah. For, for me, closing thoughts, um, I like the change of the secondary hull. I like the neck. It, it, it's that fine line, but I think it treads it well. I do think it needs some tweaks to be... Again, whenever, whenever we have a fan come to us, we'll do a Dragon's original. You know, we want to do a show, and our key is to really make, at the end of it, the ship feel like it's part of the universe. And that's the most mm -hmm. important thing, because it's not a... You know, a model you've built, it's not a concept, it should be a ship of the verse. And so this ship, I think, is a bit too kitbashy. It, 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 it's kind of like they said, okay, well, we've, we'll design this new secondary hull, it's like the Connie point five b but we, we need to rush into production, okay, we'll throw up, we'll throw this together, all the other pieces we've already got in stock. So we sort of gave up at that point, and did a, but I feel like, you know, if you really gave it its own life, Mm -hmm. The design, the design style actually works really, really well. Just make it a bit more original. You know, maybe, maybe add some small Excelsior details so it's a little step in progression. You know, they're taking because if it's after the Constitution class, it should ha start to have newer details as well. Make it a bit more original, a bit more itself, yeah. and this would really shine. It, not bad by any means now, but it's a little bit kitbashy. It's not bad. I'm just saying, I think it could really, really shine extra. It needs some tweaks. It needs the suggestions yeah. that we made. <laughs> um, one thing I just noticed too: um, the new uh, VR game Bridge Crew. This looks like the 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 ship, and that Ages. looks like a JJ version of this. You know what I mean? With the lower engines oh, and is there any set of shapes you can do? I know, I know, but it's it's an awesome shape. I love the the profile of it. It, it does work. Yeah, it does. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for this episode. The yes. point is, I really like this ship, especially from the I side, but we can do some tweaking to it, I think. On our future Trek Yards. Damn. We need to have a new show, Trek Yards Design Concepts, where we just take old ships and make them better. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, that's on camera for all you guys to enjoy now, so maybe we'll do that. I don't know. We're just thinking out loud. It's not but anyway. though, yet. Yet. <laughs> 
Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you want to help us make more of these, you definitely yes. can. You can help yep. us out on a monthly basis by clicking the link for the Patreon in the description yes. below. Um, and if you want to help us out monthly, that would be fantastic. If you can't, though, don't worry. You can do a one-time donation if you go to trekyards.com. Um, if you want to throw us a couple bucks, that'd be awesome as well. Or if you can't help financially, by all means, share the video around. Spread the Trek Yards word, and let's get this, these episodes out there for everyone to enjoy. But not just sharing the word, you know, be part of the community, subscribe to this channel, press that bell notification, like these videos, like our posts, draw us on the Trek Yards Facebook page, and the Fleet Yards Facebook page, trekyards.com, like you said. Lots of places to get involved and say hi and share in the community, because I think we've built a really wonderful Trek Yards community. We love you guys so much. We think you'll dislike us. We'd love for you to watch us every week. Um, and yeah, let us know more ships you want to see in the comments below. We'll get to them all eventually. That's sort of our modicum, isn't it? We'll get there eventually. And there's a long list, so don't worry, we're not going to run out anytime soon. So until <laughs> next time, to take another off the list, I am Commander Kongs. And I'm Captain Foley. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.